Welcome! You are listening to the Every Day is a New Day show. I am your host, Kim O'Neill, and this is the show that reminds you we live in a world of infinite possibilities. You are more amazing than you know. You are never alone, and the one with the power has always been you. I speak with awesome guests who have inspiring stories and tools to support you on your journey forward. Every day is always a new day, and your day's looking pretty bright. Hello and welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. You are listening to the Every Day is a New Day show, and I'm your host, Kim O'Neill. And I realized you have options tonight. You have some big options, especially if you're in the U.S., you have the World Series, or you have the Every Day is a New Day show. And so I thank you for being here because um, we really we really value you you tuning in and um, being a part of the show and, and hearing your feedback afterwards as well. So today we have another amazing guest. And um, there's no shortage of things that we could talk about today. She's got a lot going on. We are talking to the unstoppable Frankie Picasso. So let me tell you a little bit about her. Frankie Picasso is a Canadian socialpreneur, a talk show host, an artist, a champion for change, and she's been transforming lives and influencing culture for the past 30 years. She is the founder of the Good Radio Network, TGRN, and which is a socially conscious, conscious radio platform that is a vehicle for social impact and change. Professionally, she is a certified life, business, and master coach trainer, a hypnotherapist, author, again, of course, artist, human rights act- activist, and her unstoppable brand allows her to specialize in the impossible. As a professional social impact artist, her paintings have been featured in the International Book of Contemporary Artists, Volume 6, and can be purchased on fineartamerica.com. Seriously, who can say that, right? That's pretty cool. And for those who want custom paintings of their pets, they make wonderful gifts, and you can find out more about that at her site, frankiepaintspets.com, and that's Frankie with an I-E, frankiepaintspets.com. And each painting sold helps pay for cleft palate surgery for children, animal shelters, animal sanctuaries, and more. So, so cool. Okay, but guess what, guys? Here's some of the coolest part. Some of the the coolest things that she does. It's all really cool, okay? (laughs) It's all cool. Anyway, um, okay, but in addition to everything that I just shared with you, she was recognized as one of the 50 great writers that you should be reading in 2015. And that was for her book, Midlife Mojo, which you can find on Amazon because I already went there and found it. She's also the author of No Bull Allowed. And her third book, which is coming out very, very soon, is an anthology that she co-authored. And it's titled, I Bared My Chest, 21 Unstoppable Women Get Naked. And it's actually tied to the IBMC Global Charity coming out very soon. And she's very proud of that. She is just an all-around inspiring woman. And she was... She's a member of the Women's Economic Forum, as well as the Evolutionary Business Council. And she's a HuffPost contributor. Oh, my gosh. Like it just it doesn't even end. So with that said, I'm Thank going to welcome so Frankie much, to the show. Kim. Welcome, Frankie. Boy, I, I, I should bring you with me wherever I go. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. There's more. And Tony, <laughs> what else can they get? <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, so, you know, we were... It is crazy, but it's freaking awesome. And this, I mean, this is what makes you, not what makes you, but this is a representation of why you are unstoppable because the list just goes on and on. Well, I think it's it's about how much I love change or crave change, need change in my life. Um, And so I'm a change coach, but I always have to reinvent myself every couple of years. I get bored. And so what else can I try? What haven't I done? You know, and it's that attitude that, you know, I just try things and then you look you look back over the years, you go, oh my gosh, what haven't you died? You know? And I go, well, I've never been an airline pilot. <laughs> you know? There you go. I tried. I did. When I was 17, um, I tried to join the Air Force. Um, oh. I walked in. Yeah, I walked into the Air Force and I go, can I uh, fly a plane if I, if I join? And now this is like in the 70s, right? Okay. And I go, no. 
And I'm like, okay. Um, I walk into the Navy. I go, if I join the Navy, would you let me be like a fighter pilot? Would I be able to, you know, fly planes onto the, onto the ship? No. Okay. So I'm walking out the building and the army guy goes, Hey, he goes, where are you going? How come you didn't come here? I'm like, who the hell wants to join the army? I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I join the army, can I ride horses in the cavalry? (laughs) And what do you say to that? (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'll forget you guys. (laughs) <laughs> you have no fun. But I, I had, you know, I had known a girl who had joined the Navy and had traveled the world. And I thought that sounds pretty fun and exciting. But, you know, I wanted to do more than just be on the boat, right? I wanted to like fly or do something exciting. And, and um, they, they didn't let women do that back then. So Ooh. they do now. So we've gone yeah. a long way, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a cigarette to say it. There you go. <laughs> Well, okay, I would normally ask you this at the very end of the show, but since you already sort of opened the door, what's next? What have you not tried that you're thinking of next? Wow, that's a, that's a really good one. I don't know, Kim. I don't know. I'm racking my brain about that one. Yeah, I well, am. You seem to be on a roll with your books. The books are good, but that's, it, you know, I have an idea for a stage show. Ooh, I, had this, okay. I had this idea for a show. Um, it's a positive, it would like, it would like be in theater, right? Mm-hmm. So it'd be like a theater production, um, a very positive theater production, um, the unstoppable tour maybe. Ooh. And where we have, um, like a play and musicians and artists and everything going on on stage, uh, skits or whatever. And the audience would leave thinking I can change my life. Wow. Like <gasps> I'm positive. I can do this. Like I'm so inspired now. That's like in my head, I've been going around for a while, for a number of years, trying to think, who could I bring together and what, the, yeah, and what theaters and how cool would that show be? Oh, that would be freaking cool. That, that's absolutely, so yeah, I am going to say, so y'all couldn't see me, but I'm raising my hand. Frankie can see me right now. Yeah, she's, um, I, she's, she's, she's in, she's in. I, I'm that. totally in. I act, I act, I sing. You, can, oh, I, you act and sing perfect. Yeah. I do. Yeah. See, and I love that. Like I play the drums. And, and, you know, I love music and I, I want to be in there. I want to be in the show. Uh, you know, however it happens, somebody has to write it. We need a good writer, you know, a good script writer, a Saturday Night Live writer, somebody, but who's going to, to create this, this um, cohesion where you really are giving that message yes. that whoever's sitting in the audience and doesn't think that they're good enough or can do things or whatever it is, they're going to leave their soul like, yes, I am unstoppable yes i can have my dreams come true i can create my own dreams that's what i want oh i think that's fantastic it um it mirrors an idea I, i've had for the last couple of months i would love to host a show that has that yields such transformation for so many people once they watch it so i'm right there with you yeah well, okay well, so collaborations that- you know huge so let's let's do it I, absolutely it might take yes. a few years but yeah let's do it well, so then let me ask you, what are your thoughts about manifestation and how, how have you manifested things in your life? Any, any I'm pretty good at tips? manifesting. Yeah. You know what? It's almost scary because I can do the good and the bad. So I, I have to really watch my thoughts. Uh, yeah. But the way I do it is I often will put a picture of what I want on my screensaver so that I sit at my computer a lot. So I always have to see this picture. It's on, you know, your phone, it's on your screen and uh, I did it with my home. I have a log home that I wanted and it took about two years. And one day I'm looking in the real estate and I'm like, maybe I'll look in this area. That house showed up. I'm like, are you fripping kidding me? And we went and we bought it and that was it. Wow. That's exciting. Yeah. So I, you know, it, it happens quite often. Um, you know, if I decide that there's something I really, really want, then it takes a while. But the thing that people don't understand about manifesting is that it's not on your time. It's on the universe yeah, time. Right. And, you know, somebody said to me today about something that happened to them and like the, all of the points that had to be orchestrated and the dots that had to be, you know, crossed and matched yep. and, and, and maneuvered in order for this one event to happen two years from when, you know, it was started or whatever is phenomenal. And it's absolutely amazing. And so, you know, we often sit, and I think it might have been Robert Clancy, but we often sit in, in you know, 
our silo going, where is it? Where is it? And we never look at the big picture. We just yeah. look at the small little picture that we have in front of us thinking, me, I want this, you know? Um, but the big picture is a lot of stuff needs to happen in order to make other things happen. And so uh, patience is, is the order of the day and, you know, and the gratitude for, you know, that it's going to happen and that all makes it all work. I totally agree. Yeah. I have to remind myself that it's a co-creation and that's absolutely patience. And for me, it's also trust and trusting. Yeah. Knowing that, okay, no, this is, I haven't lost my sight, you know, or vision. Uh, the vision is still there. The universe is, is collaborating with me. And as long as I stay focused on that, everything that comes my way feeds into, uh, that, that vision. It's true. And you know what they say about, um, you know, if you clean out your closets and you declutter your home and all of that stuff, you make room for the things that you want. If you don't have room for it to come into your life, then they can't, where's it going to go? There's no place. So you really do have to declutter your mind, declutter your home, declutter, you know, different things that you want. Absolutely. I just decluttered my closet (laughs) literally like three, four days ago. Um, Yep. What do you want? What was that? What do you want to put in it? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm, I'm making room all over my home, even my body. I'm decluttering my body. I mean, I was just telling people, um, I just did a quick little Facebook live, um, where I told everyone that I had some of this pumpkin spice caramel corn, which is delicious. Um, but aside from this, I've been, I've been eating a lot healthier lately and it's, it's been a nice decluttering physical process as well. So, yeah, I gave up sugar taste 12 weeks. So I gave up sugar, um, carbs, all carbs, like rice, potatoes, starchy vegetable, uh, all of that for the last 12 weeks. And it, you know what? It hasn't been difficult at all. Like the first, you know, a couple of days are a little bit difficult, but I dropped about almost 30 pounds now and it's great. I'm, Congratulations. I'm you. And I, and I'm, you know, I, um, I don't want to use the word impaired, but slightly impaired. And so, um, I haven't been able to exercise with it. And so like, to me, like I don't sleep a lot and I don't exercise. And like, so that's pretty in- incredible for me when I think about it, Is there a specific trick that has helped you do that? I know for me, it's been drinking a lot more water. And then, of course, not going too long without eating. That clearly did not happen today. And that's how the popcorn ended up <laughs> um, with me. You know what? I eat a lot of chicken wings. <laughs> I really like chicken wings. All right. Chicken wings. I just like to nibble. I'm a grazer. And so I need little little food, you know, food yeah. that you can kind of just keep munching on. Like popcorn is my most favorite thing and I haven't had it. And um, yeah, sometimes I miss it. But I, just, I think I miss the idea of it more than I actually miss the food. Yep. And yeah, so if you can find a favorite food that you love and just eat it and find new ways to eat it and, and, and zoodles, love, love, love zoodles, you know, like zucchini noodles and oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So now I'm making pasta instead of pasta, I'm making it with, with zoodles, with noodles, the zucchinis. And I, um, I finally invested in, um, a really nice, uh, Cuisinart, um, zoodle maker. So it's just, boom, and you got dinner, you know? Nice. Okay. We weren't planning on talking about food, but this Sorry. is nice. <laughs> it's late at night. I'm going to talk about food. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, let's talk about your book. You have this book coming out. I do. I, tell us, tell us. I mean, this sounds, I love the title. I bared my chest 21 unstoppable women get naked and yeah. it's tied to a charity. It's tell us, charity. tell us about this book. So in July, 27 is it 2017 right now 2016 Mm -hmm. july 2016 um a young woman alex akorji who's an actress and a uh radio host and the most creative woman i've ever met in my life who's from nigeria lagos nigeria hosted a creative summit a virtual summit and she invited numerous people in six different categories from music to you know coaching to book writing to whatever anyway i was a i was an invited guest and i ended up becoming the co-host of this event for six days we had such a blast and when it was over i said to alex gee like this was so much fun um we got to keep this going now her brand is naked my brand is unstoppable. So we okay. put our brands together and said, what can we do with Naked and Unstoppable? 
And we thought, okay, well, we can have, you know, unstoppable women get naked. And getting naked, of course, is uh, expressing yourself at your core and just not hiding who you are from the world, but being super authentic. And like from her creative side, like her visual marketing stuff, everything, she's like, honest to God, like, I've never seen anybody like it, but she's young, like you. And, you know, you guys just know all this stuff. I'm always amazed at, at what she does. So we we decided that we we would do this book and we started to invite people that we liked and that we knew not by design just like hey you know what i love kim let's invite kim to be part of this and if they said yes great so almost everybody that we had invited said yes and we said now we're going to ask you 12 questions and you all have to answer the same questions and they're very intrusive and we understand that they are and you know they're intimate and uh but go with it and go with it as if this is a journal or your best friend that your daughter or somebody that you're telling your life to. We don't want you to teach them. We don't want you to preach at them. We don't want you to be, we all know that you guys are famous coaches or whatever, but it's not about that. It's just about getting real with your life and who am I? And we had talked about finances and we talked about love and friendship and just everyday life, right? Everything that yeah. would, your career, who am I? Everything. So they answered all of these questions. And then I went back and I said, okay, now go deeper because it's, I bared my chest. So you have to really, you know, forget about hiding, keep going, keep going. And we really pushed them and it was amazing what came out. Now, the overarching theme from everybody's story is really everybody wants freedom. They want the freedom mm -hmm. to be themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And we wanted the IBMC Global Foundation, we wanted freedom for the rest of the world. Because for me, as a socialpreneur, I really wanted to make sure that people were free to be educated, especially women. I wanted to be sure that they're able to express themselves in their words, their love. If you're gay, if you're whatever, like you can love who you want. If you, you know, it, it, this visual of, um, in, in Iraq where the women get seen by a doctor with two hands through a wall. Like that's how he, you know, looks at oh women. They're not allowed to be seen undressed, right? Wow. Like, what the hell? Yeah. How can you do that? So I want them to be, have proper medical care, be free to have that, be free to uncover their face if they want, be free to charge, like War Child, I love War Child because they're actually charging the, the rapists who rape women during war or whatever, um, in court for these women now. So they actually get, you know, um, wow. get, get their day of power back. And, you know, so different organizations like that. I don't want, you know, the Red Cross, but I want to have, our goal then was to give $1 million to charity. If we can make enough money out of that book, we mm -hmm. want to give a million dollars to charity. And maybe it's just in time. Maybe it's, you know, for sure, mercy ships, for sure, you know, but the people that I know who are on the ground, hands on getting dirty, changing the world, those are the people who need the money. And those are the people I want to get it. So that's the freedom and the freedom of the book. Now, of course, it was supposed to be very, um, very fast turnaround. I, you know, I'd really hope by November last year that the book would be out, but we got hung up. And through that, some people dropped out. And we thought, okay, that's okay, because the book will only get stronger. And it did. And wow. I was like, you know, it was going to be International Women's Day. Then it was going to be this. And I go, people aren't going to believe us anymore. Like, you know, come on, we have to like really do our thing. But as the time went on, and as I had more ideas about, let's do Facebook Friday happy hours. Let's do reading excerpts from the book. At that point, I realized, oh my gosh, these are so strong we have to do an audio book. This oh, is no exciting. longer going to be, you know, just a reading book. Because the book is huge. The book is over 600 pages, I think. So, yeah. So, wow. I thought audio has to be the way to go and not professional. No, I want the women to read it in their own voices. They're from India. They're from Africa. They're from Australia. They're from, you know, Canada. They're from the U.S. They're from uh, everywhere you can think of. They are Muslim. They are Jewish. They are Christian. They're you know, whatever, uh, awesome. they, they're gay, they're bisexual, they're, um, transgender, they're like everything under the sun, not by design, just happenstance. And that was what was so cool about the book. That and is so phenomenal. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm so excited about it. I cannot wait for the world to read this book and for everybody. I mean, there we have a 16 year old to 60 year old in the book. Uh, this this sounds like a very um, yeah, it's a huge transformational book. It's right a there. huge transformational book, and I really think that if you find the right person in the book. And I don't think people will read it this way. I literally, I think that they'll read it, you know, oh, let me see what this person thinks. Or let me think what that person, career, yeah. oh, maybe I'll just read all about career. Maybe I'll just read all about sex. Maybe I'll just read about, you know, whatever. Yeah. But as they read the book um, and hopefully get more interested in, or interested in people's lives, they'll go, oh, I have that problem. How did she get through that problem? And there'll be things in that book where people will go, oh, okay, I can use this. I can use this. This is what, how I'm feeling right now. Whether you feel um, like everybody hates you, or you feel, or you've, or you've got um, some people have dyslexia, some people have they're bipolar, some people have you know other diseases and other things that are wrong with them that you might that people will identify with and go, okay, I needed to hear that. Awesome, because they're bearing. Not everybody bears, right? They don't all. Yeah. They want to show their their shiny face, not their dirty face. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering, would you be open to sharing with us what some of those questions were that every author was asked? Sure. Yeah. Hang on. Let me see. Let me see if I can find them. You should ask me that earlier and I could have come up with them quicker. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we, and we can come back to that too. Yeah. Yeah. Go, I, keep, yeah I, hold on. I think I can come up with them pretty quick. Let's just see. Well, and what I, you know, you mentioned that someone had dropped out and, um, but the book actually got stronger. And I think, I just, I love that because um, what I love is because when we think something's not working out the way that we right. thought it originally was, that doesn't mean all this lost or that it's falling apart. That what's that saying? Um, you will, of course, when one door closes, another opens or when, yeah. it, oh, I'm, blanking on the exact quote, but like something falls apart and that's because something else is coming together. And uh, yeah, at first, you know, we were a little afraid and then, and then it's like, oh, okay, that it really has gotten better over time. And so, you know, with the seasoning and with the waiting, we are coming out with a better product. And so nice. I'm really happy. I'm really happy about it. So here are some of the questions. So okay. it, it starts off um, with a powerful summary of who you are now. Everything okay. you encompass, your age, career, what you do, uh, how you currently influence the world, uh, your jobs, mom, coach, artist, dancer, radio host, whatever. Um, this is who you are currently. So on being naked, t tell us what the word naked first pops into your head and what does naked truly mean to you. Let's talk about your early life. Let's go back in time. What was your family dynamic? And we are going to post these questions because we want every woman in the world to come on our site and answer them with us, nice. be, you know, be authors with us. Um, let's look at the relationship in your immediate family, family struggles, beliefs, childhood, friends, all of that. So on finances, what are your views about financial independence? Have you ever struggled financially? What is the most ridiculous financial misstep you've ever taken? What's the smartest finan financial decision you ever made? What does wealth mean to you? Physical body. Let's move your lens to the physical. How do you honestly view your physical body? Be descriptive. Ooh your skin color, body shape, age, weight. How do others view you? Remember any funny, weird, or painful remark made about it. How did that make you feel? Uh, did you have weight struggles, insecurity with your color, limitations about certain facial body features? Who or what is your biggest body confidence booster? Love and relationships. What do you think is the biggest misconception uh, you have or had about love? Any special fond memories, surprises, things you had to learn the hard way about your partner or yourself? Spiritual beliefs. Let's get a viewpoint on your spiritual leaning practice, beliefs, or lack of when and where. Have you embraced these views and your strongest reason for why you have these views? Sex. What are your views on sex as a woman? What makes you feel the most sexy or wanted? What triggers or turn ons or turn offs? Experienced any sexual hang ups or limitations, insecurities or concerns? Things you've experimented that failed or worked? Painful experiences that warped your views? Something mom and ever told you about sex? One mantra or tip you think all women should keep or have or try in the bedroom. Career mm. truths. How did you decide on the career you have now? Journey to the place of purpose. Any career pitfalls? What's been the biggest hindrance in your career path? Highlight your biggest career achievement. Do you feel rewarded enough for the work that you do? What do you consider to be the biggest benefit you have experienced building a career in the millennium? It goes on. Do you want me to go on and on? And then, <laughs> and then we have the challenge. What is pain to you? Describe Ooh. the most painful time in your life, how it came about, how long it lasted, and those who abandoned you, 
who helped you, the breakthrough. How did how did you overcome or make your way through this painful period in your life and how are you feeling today? Happiness. Where's your happy place or happy spot? What does it look like? What triggers it uh, or gives you immense joy? And how do you think others can find theirs, your wow. influences? What are your views about mentoring and mentorship? Do you have any life or career influences, people who inspired you? Who are they and how did they inspire you or why? Uh, resolution Ooh. and philosophy. What advice do you have for others? Lessons learned or something you wish you'd known? And if you had a name, uh, your life after a book, song, or movie, what would you call it? And oh, hey, wait a minute, what makes you unstoppable? And I, I missed out on, I think, career truth dynamics and societal ills, but you wow. get the picture. Oh, yeah. Those are fantastic. What I love is that, um, of course, you have a, a range of authors, so they're all coming from different perspectives. Um, but and I just. And everything, it, so it, it's all different. It, Exactly. Yeah. It can be so easy. Even I, I think of myself as someone who's pretty open-minded and I, I think I take on some you know alternative perspectives about life and all this stuff, but even so it can be so easy to still, to some degree, end up in a bubble and find out that, oh, not every woman thinks this same thing about their body, you know, right. or we have different experiences and, and real, you know, just yeah, some some people. It was interesting to to hear about racism from a perspective of you know somebody of, of color, and how the reverse racism about how you know they hated us and and it came to realization that they really didn't because they just didn't know any better wow. or know anything. So there was some really great revelations. Um, you know, ch- people who had been so challenged, like with anorexia, or challenged with uh, you know changing their gender and you know living a whole lie like life as a man with children and a wife and, and changing. And um, but it's just so exciting and phenomenal to me. And everybody was just so brilliantly open. Is, is there a new date for when this book comes out? Well, we have November 21st and I still really hope that we can reach it. Um, okay. You know, of course everybody's, I'm not telling anybody really too much. Uh, the audio people are like, oh, you have to be professional. You have to go in a studio. Hopefully they're going in a studio. But I think they've all done a really credible job. And even if they haven't, I think people will, will excuse it because it's yeah. real. I think so you know? too. I think they will. Um, nobody's done it. It's exciting. You know, I think we can pull it off. Um, like I said, we just lost an author. We're going to get another author. Maybe you want to be the author, Kim. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, you've heard the questions now. Um, I know. Yeah. You, you have to write it like really quick and you have to make it an audio really quick. But other than that, it's really, um, uh, you know, I think we can pull it off. I think we can pull it off. That's it's exciting stuff. It's a challenge. I, I bet. We have many authors again? You said, no, it's 21, right? 21. Yeah, so okay. there's 20 right now. Okay. And so to find out more about the book, the, it's, the website is the to, same? The website is IBearedMyChest.com. The website is being redone right now. So you're okay. going to see the old website, but the new one is going to be fabulous. Like we've had three websites already, but they're always getting better. And I, I did see some of those um, Friday happy hour clips on your Facebook page, right? Yeah. The book's yeah. Facebook page? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, before we go to a little break, what has, what's been your favorite thing about this book? You know, I love to collaborate. I really do. And it's been really fun to meet these women and really get to know who they are. And, you know, I'm kind of like the mom, I guess, because I think I'm the oldest in the group, but it's... And Frankie's pretty young, by the way, so... Uh, no, I'm not very young. <laughs> well, she... she Okay, good. But, but you know, I mean, it's 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 exciting. It's exciting to to be in charge of such a just ginormous project, really. You know, yeah. and and see it come together. I I love to birth things. I I'm you know, um, I always say as an entrepreneur, that's the most fun time. The idea, the creative, the generation, and all of that. Like putting it together, that's not my fun time. Like this is not like as they come together. No. Yeah. But I love the ideas and I love like getting crazier and better and everything just like like when the audio one popped in my head I'm like oh my god yes yay oh and, yeah you know, like that's so much fun um I'm not really good at running the show but I'm very good at, at birthing the baby <laughs> well I think it sounds like a phenomenal book and I look forward to being you know kept up, updated of when it comes out and stuff Thank so you. 
So, okay, we are going to go to our first break. And, well, actually, the only break. It's the only break of the show. So we're going to go to a break. And when we come back, um, Frankie, I would love to ask you more about your answers to some of those questions in the book and how you oh, overcame wow. some of the challenges that, um, that you wrote about. How does that sound? Okay, sure. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we're going to take a break, but stay right there, and we'll be back with more Frankie Picasso. <laughs> No matter how your life looks today, your possibilities are endless. You deserve all the joy, peace, and excitement in life that you desire. Life doesn't come with a manual, and that's why personal coaching is so awesome. Moving forward is easier. Creating a new reality for yourself, healing your mind and body, it's all possible. Visit KimO'NealCoaching.com today to learn more and schedule your free consultation. What books are you reading? Are you ready for a must-read? Winner of the Inspirational Book of the Year Award and International Best Sellers, Dare to Dream, This Life Counts by Debbie Dashinger, as well as the acclaimed Wisdom to Success, The Surefire Secrets to Accomplish All Your Dreams. Buy the books from Amazon today. U.S. Book Review and Writer's Digest said these are critics' picks by Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream, and Wisdom to Success contain gems to live your life by. Sometimes we wish we could practically do nothing and still feel better. Guess what? You kind of can. When you schedule a Reiki or guided meditation session, you can just be and receive and allow the energy to shift. There's relief. These energy sessions can be done alone or combined with a coaching session. Find out more at KimO'NealCoaching.com and click on the energy work tab. Do you have a published book that never reached its bestseller potential? Are you working on a book or ebook you hope to publish soon? Do you have a book locked inside waiting to release your message to the world? Go to mybestsellerbook.com. My Bestseller Book will launch your book to a guaranteed bestseller status. Learn more at mybestsellerbook.com. All right. Welcome back to the show. You are listening to Every Day is a New Day here on BBS. I am your host, Kim O'Neill. And today I have with me the unstoppable Frankie Picasso, who does so many things. One of the coolest things that, you know, I shouldn't even say one of the coolest. Everything I, I read to you earlier is all very cool. Um, but one of her amazing things that she has going on right now is she has an anthology coming out very soon here in November. And it's a book called I Bared My Chest, 21 Unstoppable Women Get Naked. And there are so many questions that you're all answering. And I had the privilege of reading an excerpt of Frankie's portion of the book. And so I would love to ask Frankie a little bit more about this. Um, because what I read is um, a story of how she got in a car accident and just... Would you, would you share with us, share with the listeners a little bit um, about that story and what that... It's a motorcycle accident. Oh, was that what it was? Okay. Yeah. I was riding a motorcycle and a car T-boned me. So I was oh riding... Gosh. I rode with three different motorcycle clubs and Acme was a club that I was a founding member of. And I rode Tuesday nights with, with these guys. Um, and normally we, we rode in their end of town on the east side, but I said, no, no you guys come with me to the west side. And we were riding through a countryside. It was beautiful. Like it was like dusk, I guess. Um, and we we're just heading around to go uh, into a coffee shop. We we're going to go to a coffee shop, but like we were probably, I don't know, 20 miles away or something like that um, before we were just going to, you know, pull in and get a coffee or whatever. And boom, out of nowhere, I get T boned and I find myself laying on the side of the road. My bike is twisted. You know, her oh. name is Mercury. And all like at first I felt nothing. And then all I felt was like pain. And I can, the only way I can describe it was like, it was like those Mexican ju jumping beans that go dun, 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 like oh this crazy, crazy. And that they were every, every like nerve ending was just firing off sparks. 
and I could feel that my my leg um, wasn't attached to my body anymore. <gasps> oh. And and it, I didn't know because I had my chaps on. I didn't know that I had an open fracture. The bone was already through my leg and bleeding out. And it just took forever. Like I remember laying there and it was, you know, I saw like the su- the sky was like pink and ribbons and stuff. And then the next thing I know, it's like the stars are just like around the country and you just see like gazillions of stars. And the fire truck had come as the first responder and they they didn't want to touch me. Then oh the police gosh. came and there was a woman, police officer. She held my hand and oh. she was a rider. And um, we waited like forever. And then the ambulance came and they took me to two hospitals. I went to the first hospital where they stabilized me, straightened my leg out. And then the second hospital was um, where they they started the surgeries. They didn't do them all on the first night. But wow. I broke both both femurs, hip pelvis. And um, that's where they what they started to put and other things. But that was the major stuff. And that's what they they, they did my femurs that night. Wow. Here's something that you, you wrote. Um, she wrote, my body registered that I had just been tossed about like a rag doll, seemingly weightless, but the landing confirmed that I was no rag doll. I was a broken doll. I did a quick check to see if my bike had made it through okay. <laughs> and um, I can't imagine something like that. That's um, I love that bike. I, I, I treated that bike like you treat a baby. Like, honestly, I had special you know, chrome things made for it and, and license plate stuff. And I had purple LED lights that it was silver. So I had purple LED lights um, framing it. And then out the back, I had orange and, and yellow and purple lights. So it looked like flames coming out and it yeah. had like a flame thing around it. It was gorgeous. It was really stunning. And I loved, loved, loved it. And I felt so cheated that, you know, she was broken. And, you know, the doctors always laugh that they put my bike back inside me. Because you know, I have so much metal in me now. Oh, like it got was, it. Yeah. Oh, have are you able to ride now? Mm-hmm. No. I got back on a bike um, oh, a did. few times. Okay. Yeah, right away. Okay. As soon as I got out of the hospital, I did. Um, and I was in the hospital six months, but I got I got on a bike as soon as I could because I'm a former equestrian, so you always get back on the horse, right? Yeah. So um, I didn't want to stop riding out of fear. I wanted to stop riding because it hurt like hell. Which it does. Yeah, just a straddling, like, you know, you break that that part of you. And they, on my left side, they it's pretty tight with the hardware. Uh-huh. So it just, it's not comfortable. Okay. Like, maybe I'll get a trike one day or something. We'll see. But I, I can't support a uh, the two. Like, normally you okay. hold your bike up between your legs, right? Yeah. And they're like seven, 800 pounds. Uh, I can't do that now. Okay. Well, so the other part of your story, though, is that... 11 days prior to that accident, you had obtained a legal, a legal separation agreement from your then husband. Yeah. How, how, talk about how that played into this whole situation. Um, okay. You want to talk about manifesting? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Like you ask the universe, it's going to bring you you don't ask properly, you're going to get things in a very yes. different way. But I had been, I had been really wanting to get out of that marriage desperately. I, I needed to get out of it in such a way that I could still, you know, support my children and, and stuff. And um, I did go to the lawyer 11 days prior and, and I got the separation because he didn't want to go. He get you know it, it's funny right I hate you you're you're horrible you're the worst woman I've ever been like I can't stand you and yet they don't go like what's up with that right wow like go <laughs> just right. go anyway so I never well, he, understood he was that. an alcoholic right he was an alcoholic he was very abusive uh, physically mentally to me to the kids and I just want he wasn't their dad and I just wanted him gone okay. but you know he was a second marriage and you know. I stayed long, a lot, many years longer than I should because you don't want to be a failure, I guess, and you keep hoping that things will change. But they didn't. They got worse. So I said, that's it. Like, I'm getting the separation agreement so you know I'm serious, and then, you know, you're gone. Well, of course, I had the accident, and he comes to the room, and he's like, you know, of course I'll stay. You know, like, you can't handle this by yourself. And I'm like, no, I didn't hit my head. I can, I, I'm still, we're still moving forward with this. And, um, he didn't like that idea at all. And then his mother came and 
you know, you can't like, please, please don't do this. Why did you have an affair? Like what's going on? And I'm like, I don't have an affair. I just don't want to be with an alcoholic and, and somebody like we were always on edge. Like I, the, I guess the night before I went down with the, the lawyer, I realized when he came home, how my stomach got all churned and, and everybody yeah. was like, who's coming in the door, the good guy or the bad guy. Like we didn't um, know. And it was when I finally clued into the physicality of it, because, you know, in your head, but you don't really, like, but I'm like, holy crap, like my whole body is just a, an adrenaline rush when we hear that. That is like that cortisol, that's not good. That's not healthy. It's going to make give you cancer. It's going to make you really sick in some way. This has to stop. So, you know, Erica, we, we, I moved ahead with it. Um, not How long easy. have you guys been married? 12 years. 12 years. Okay. So, and it was interesting because after I got out of the hospital, I had a friend who was a volunteer who also had a, a motorcycle accident. He had brain injury in his, and he volunteered at um, the sec, like one, a big hospital, trauma hospital. And a woman had come in with injuries very similar to mine. She had been a snowmobile racer and the chain had come off. She'd been doing about 200 miles an hour. Oh. And her husband was freaking out. He goes, you have to come down to the hospital. Now, like I'm limping, right? I'm like, but I have to go to come down to the hospital. I'm like, okay. Um, and meet her husband. So I, I came down, I, I talked to him. I said, yeah, I have the same injuries as your wife. I'm sure she's going to be fine. She'll come through it. It's not easy. It hurts, but whatever, but you know, she might not even be in there for six months. You don't know. Anyway, he goes, but who looked after you? And I go, no, but he goes, you didn't have a man. I go, what do I need a man for? <laughs> what are you going to do for me? Like my body has to heal, right? Wow. It was funny. Yeah, it was so interesting that he thought that you had to have a man. How old were your kids at that time? 15 and 17. I twins, so 15 and 17. Okay. 14. Yeah. My oldest one was driving. They, he would drive them to the hospital. I was there six months, right? I was fine. In the hospital for six months. My goodness. <laughs> Tell us who, so, I mean, so today you've been, you've, you're a master coach trainer, hypnotherapist, you have written a book, you've helped other people, you know, collaborate on books, you do all these things, you host a whole radio network and you paint all these things. Did you do all these things or any of these things before then? Um, no, yes and no. I what I I coached, but it wasn't called coaching. I okay. was, I had a title. Uh, well, I was the first female kickboxing promoter in the world. I used to yes. manage a world champion. That's pretty yeah. awesome. He was a 12 time win. I used to work in boxing and then a, a kickboxer came in. He was also a musician and a, a mutual friend had introduced us and he said, you know, I want a world champion fight. He'd already won 11 and he wanted a 12. And he said, I'm looking for a manager and I'm looking for a title fight. Will you put it on? And will you manage me? I go, yes. So that happened. Um, but uh, after that, um, I, I worked for the government and my title was special advisor for spirit. And Ooh. I, I went in there after my fight. Um, I got a call to come in and do a, sh a, a showcase. I was, a you know, did, did promotions and I go, okay. And I ended up staying and it was perfect timing, perfect timing. Like I'd never really worked in an organization and got paid. Like I always worked on commissions and stuff, but I actually got paid good money and had benefits and my kids got to have their braces and like everything just worked out really well for that. Right. Like okay. manifested that. Yeah. And then um, when I had the accident, if I hadn't been working for that company for the government, I wouldn't have never got a disability or anything. Right. Okay. I would have been screwed. So that was really interesting. But um, yeah, uh, I was a, I was a coach, but not a coach, right? Because okay. coaching hadn't even really existed then. Yeah. Um, when I when I found out about it, um, I was going to become a spiritual psychotherapist, and she said to me, "Oh, I met a woman. She was a coach, and you have I think it was um, one of the Fords, uh, and and she goes, you check it out. You're going to be a coach.' I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. And it was so interesting when I became a coach and and I became a, a coaching instructor because. The people that I was meeting 
neurosurgeons who want to be coaches. And I'm like, you're going to give up neurosurgery to become a coach? Like, I don't get it. But everybody was looking for something more positive in their life. They were looking to yes. help other people change their lives. And coaching is such a brilliant, you know, yes. uh, modality. And you can literally, I mean, if you change your perspective, you literally change your life in a nanosecond. So I, I just really loved it. I didn't paint before. Um, I didn't start painting until about five or six years ago. Um, I always loved writing, but I didn't write a book. Obviously, I always wanted to, but I was so busy doing busy stuff, right? And okay. that was the thing. The universe had been, I knew that the universe was talking to me. I didn't know what it wanted. And I kept going, I don't know what you want. Tell me, be more clear. Boom. And so, you know, you get taken out and you have lots of time, six months to figure it all out, right? Six months. Wow. And it was a very interesting journey. Yeah. Let's, I want to go back to your story for a moment because, um, you know, I, I like to be able to share insights on how people moved through their challenges and, and we've already done some of that. But I, I want to ask you, you, you were in this motorcycle accident and 11 days prior, you had finally done the legal separation that you'd wanted to do for a lot longer, right? Sure. Yeah. So it sounds it sounds like when the accident happened, you had a burst of additional strength that said, "No, we're still doing this." But what what was it that helped you get to that point eleven days earlier to say, "Okay, I'm doing this. I'm doing the legal separation." My kids, okay. really, yeah. My older son um, wanted to go into firefighting, okay. and I was worried that if my ex husband hit me or did something stupid and he got in the way of that and he got hurt this person that he would not be able to have the life that he wanted to have wow. right so it it became i'm like i have to do this now before something happens and he gets a record or something you know of course he's going to protect me he's my son you know and he's now he's big and he's bulky and he can get in there and he's not afraid of him right so i thought no 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 we have to stop this right now that was really the impetus. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had other people come up to you since then and just uh, talk to you about how, how your story has helped them and being able to step outside of their marriage and take stand for themselves or anything like that? I don't think so. I don't know. Um, like Noble Allowed, <clears throat> excuse me, that book was a relationship book that we wrote, Kelly and I wrote, we used to have a radio show called The Love Wranglers. And Kelly had been married um, four or five times, I think. And, and at that point, you know, uh, I had, had multiple marriages and we had a ton of kids together. And, you know, we thought, well, we can help other women get through these challenges. So that book was based on 48 song titles of relationships, beginning, middles, and ends of relationships, which we took the title we each gave our own personal story of that, what happened during that to that title. And then we gave a coaching um, scenario. And then we gave, you know, boot the bull, we call it boot the bull, which were exercises for the reader. So okay. for the women who kept, you know, choosing the wrong guy, or just wouldn't leave because of money, or, you know, like, 50 ways to leave your lover, I'm having your baby, like all of these song titles, right? had uh, my best friend's girl, like, you know, are you cheating on them? Like, come on, what are you doing? So we, we just spoke to them like real people who had lived a life and been through, you know, many relationships, um, hoping to help other women change and men if they wanted to. But it was like how to lasso and, you know, uh, losers and, or what was it? How to last in love and lose the loser, or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's what that was about. And we had the radio show that went with it, and we would have people on and talking about their their love life and challenges. And it was great. It was fun. It, it sounds like um, your kids are obviously one source where you. It sounds like you gain strength and courage. Is is there anything else in your life um, that that you've you've learned really helps you to be able to take, you know, bolder action and do things that might be a little scary. You know, it's, I'm blessed with the confidence. Um, and it came from my dad. And my dad told me when I was a little girl, he says, you can do anything you want and you can be anything that you want. 
And my dad never lied to me. As far as I know, he never lied to me about, you know, he, he, he in the book, you'll say he lied to me about one thing, but he never lied to me about, you know, if he said, I'm going to buy you this, he bought me that. Like he promised me a horse at 10. I got a horse at 10. Like, so he never lied to me, like about things between us. And so I believed him and I modeled my life after him. And he's such a good role model. And um, so I always just use this idea of if I couldn't, and people have said this to me before too, that they'll, that they'll pretend they're me to go and do something. Well, uh-huh. I pretended I'm somebody else, right? I mean, I would, I'm an actress and I just play this role and I'll walk in and I'll, you know, I'll get it or I'll nail it. But really, I don't need to. Um, but when you, your confidence is low, that is something I recommend to people. Just, you know, who is it that you want to be? Pretend you're them for that day and yes. go in and be them and do fake what you need it, to do. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. Some people don't like fake it till you make it. I think fake it till you make it is very powerful. I think so too. Yeah. I, think, I don't think it's not about being fake. It's about, no. you know, what's the energy that I'm trying to attain more of. And so just embrace it right now. My grandma used to say, um, my grandma was a music teacher and I took voice lessons from her when I was a kid. And, you know, I think it was maybe a Celine Dion song or someone else with a big voice. There might've been a Mariah Carey song. And I met you Celine. Got, you met Celine? Yeah. <gasps> you know, I'll tell you really quick. Cause she, she used to have a restaurant. She's Canadian. She used to have a restaurant, um, a chain of restaurants called Nichols. And my kids loved it. And they had a, Nichols had a Celine's favorite. It was a 10 layer chocolate cake. It was no, no lie this high. Right. Okay. okay. And we used to go there. We, and five people could eat this slice of cake. So one day Celine and Renee was there. They flew in with a, by a helicopter. They were at the thing. She is so tiny. Oh my God. She's like a little bird. She's like so petite. Like you, she seems so, you know, big persona, but she's just very shy, very petite. She didn't talk because she was going to do a show that night. And I guess there's, you know, she wanted to save her vocal cords, but very sweet and very loving. Yeah. Very, very nice lady. Well, yeah. like, I was just saying, you know, you would, you would, I, I, I would sing the song one way. And then my grandma would say, okay, now pretend you're Celine Dion or pretend yeah. you're Mariah Carey. And all of a sudden, boom, you know, powerhouse yeah, voice comes out. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that's the way to do it. And, you know, I encourage people to do that, but a lot of people told me that they've pretended that they were me. <laughs> I think that's, that's really pretty funny. flattering. <laughs> yeah, it is. But yeah, you know, the thing is, if you believe it and, and, you know, Napoleon Hill said, yes. if you believe it, you achieve it. Yep. But I've always gone in thinking to myself, okay, I don't have the education for this, maybe, and I don't have this for it. But what I do have is the belief that I can do it. So as long as I believe 110% that I can do something, I can do it and I can sell it. I can, I can sell you on the idea that I can do it because I believe it. And, you know, it's written on my face. I can do this. <laughs> you know? do you, Frankie, do you have a mission in life? You're clearly very unstoppable, but is, is there a way that you encapsulate all that? It changes all the time. You know, as you get older, things change. And, um, you know, I wrote about how um, uh, Kierkegaard said that, you know, you, you live your life forward. You can't live it backward because you're living it forward, but you have to keep looking back to see where you came from. So as I get older and there comes a point, I think, in our lives where we stop the rat race of, you know, going to baseball games and hockey games and just, you know, life is so crazy and busy as a family. Um, and then you become an individual again and you go, okay, what's next for me? What the questions come up? What's my purpose? What am I doing here? And in that comes this idea of giving back always. Almost everybody I've met there's wants to do something to give back and give their life meaning. And, you know, if you're lucky, um, you get to to live on through your books or your songs or whatever your paintings or whatever it is that happens. Um, but I think for me, it's about social impact and change and becoming, helping people become aware that they need to be a better steward of this planet, mm-hmm. helping people become aware that just because they, you know, they're living the life that they have doesn't mean that life can't change. In my book, Midlife Mojo, I talk about how all the world's a stage. And if you didn't get the right part, if you know uh, you weren't handed that right role, choose a different one. Who's nobody's keeping you in it except yourself. Yeah. People say, "How do you change your life, Frankie?" 
change your thought. That's it. So simple and so difficult, but it really is a matter of just changing your thought. Who do I yeah. want to be? I want to be Kim. Okay. Do I want to have a radio show? Okay. Right. How do you start a radio show, Kim? You do it. You just yeah. do it pretty yeah. much. Right. Yeah. And it's that simple. Just do it. Like you had it. Right. It sounds like you definitely connect to a bigger why, which I know can pull a lot of people through. It's, it can be easy to, and I don't know why, why is this easy, but it can be so easy to dismiss ourselves. Like you were, you mentioned in your story earlier, it was your kid that helped you get to that place to finally say, okay, I'm done. Right. Yeah. Like, why isn't it good enough sometimes for ourselves? Well, no, it's because me, right. I'm tired of dealing with this or that or that. Um, but it can, yeah, I, I find that too. You can find a lot of strength and um, inspiration, motivation, encouragement, whatever you want to call it from helping other people. Absolutely. And you know, like when you're down, that's what you have to go do. Like if you're depressed, yeah. go help somebody. Yep. Mother Teresa said you can't walk fast and be depressed. And it's true. You know, like really, if you want to feel better, go help people and you'll get out of yourself and your self pity. And, you know, find that making somebody else happy is, is a really great way to feel good about yourself. It really yeah. is. You know, it really is. I, I think that, you know, we can do so many amazing things um, for ourselves and for others. And it doesn't take a lot of energy really to make yeah. somebody feel good. Yep. It literally can just be walking by someone and smiling at yeah. them. Yeah. It makes That's a difference. It. And if, you know, they, they got seen today. Yes. Somebody actually acknowledged them. And I mean, I can't even imagine going the rest of your, can you imagine going the rest of your life without somebody ever giving you a hug or anybody oh. like actually touching you or like, I mean, it's so amazing to think. And then there's so many people out there who have to live a life like that. Yeah. And it's sad. Yeah. Well, we are coming to the end of the show. Um, Frankie, you, you have a lot of things going on. What is, you know, what's the best way to contact you um, if someone would like to contact you? Coach Picasso at rogers.com. Okay. I could, can I tell you a really fun story? Yes, I don't know if yes. I told you this or not. Go ahead. Um, I was contacted, uh, and by next week we'll, we'll be allowed to tell. So I was contacted by an ad agency for, I won't mention who their client is, um, but they were looking for, for people who had famous painters' last names. So How exciting. I, how excited is that, right? Yes. So I got a call and like, and would you come and paint? A picture and the idea was just because it's called a picasso doesn't mean it is a picasso right and i go i have to be honest like i, I paint and they go okay that's no no problem paint with your left hand or whatever so i get down there last weekend and i had to paint um the, the woman in the mirror picasso's woman in the mirror okay and now this painting was six feet by four feet whoa i'm five one so already i can't reach the top <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. And I had an hour and a half to paint this painting freehand, right? What? And I'm like, normally it takes me about six hours to do my 16 by 20s, 18 by 24, okay. right? Those are, and I'm considered to be a very fast painter. But this was like on speed. And I was like, I was like drenching and they're videotaping and they're taking pictures and like for an ad campaign. Right. And I'm like, oh, my God, they dressed me in this stupid thing and everything. How cool. Well, tomorrow night I get to go to an art gallery. They framed it now. <gasps> and I'm the only artist going down. And they had, oh. they had a Monet. They had, you know, all these different ones. But I'm going down to sign autographs, I guess, for my painting. <laughs> I okay, so I have to ask, do you have any relation to... The actual, the, I don't, I no, don't, okay. I don't, but you know, what's really funny is that, um, my dad looks very, very much like him. Like, hmm. like he could be brothers. Have you done any of those gene genealogy reports to see? Well, and you know, all of us, like I'm European. I come from Austria. I was born in Austria and, um, it came back 99% European. Right. So who knows? Okay. But wow. um, I didn't like get his DNA or anything. But who knows? You never know, right? That's pretty awesome. Okay, well, that's a fun story. And so for all those watching, if you'd like to find out more about Frankie's painting, you can go to FrankiePaintsPets.com. And that's Frankie with an I-E. Now, Frankie the Painting Pets one, sorry. Yeah, FrankiePaintsPets.com yeah. is um, specifically social impact painting. So if you have an animal okay. that died or you have an animal that you want to keep alive, the proceeds from those paintings go to pay for, like, um, I don't know if you can see them behind me. I've got 
um, the don no, they're they're missing over here. The donkeys. Okay. I got donkeys from the donkey sanctuary. Uh, the children with cleft palate surgery for mercy ships. Um, animals and animal shelters. Um, that's the proceeds from those paintings. Okay. So to pay for those. Okay, and then okay. actually, yeah, I do see you have another one. Original paw. Picasso. They're the same thing. But I, okay. original Paul Picasso is the same, but people found it hard to go to. So I just went Frankie okay. Pets and I, and I redirected it there. Or oh, it. you can just order whatever kind of custom painting you want, which people do too. But um, okay, yeah, but the pets are my favorites to do. And I just love them. So I love dogs. That's fun. I love that. So, so if you have a dog or a cat or any animal that you love and you want a painting, an original painting Christmas, of it. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want a Paul Castle? Exactly. So, um, yes. So you can check that out. FrankiePaintsPets.com. And we are at the end of the show. So thank you so much for being here. If you'd thank like to find you. out, you're welcome. Thank you, Frankie. This was fun. Um, if you would like to find out more about me, about other shows that I've got going on, you can go to Kim O'Neill coaching.com. So I coach as well. Um, and then just click on the radio tab and you'll see other shows I have coming up. Next week, we're going to be continuing with the anthology, let's see, the interviews of the authors in the anthology that I am a part of this year called Positive Minded People. I'm very excited about that. And so that will be next Wednesday, November 8th at 7 p.m. here on bbsradio.com. And of course, on our Facebook page, we've got all the interviews and stuff going on there as well. So feel free to check that out. And just a reminder that changing your reality, your experience of life. Frankie was talking earlier about it can be as simple as changing your thoughts, changing what you believe about the situation. We even talked about how just embodying, just, just, you know, let's play with it, right? So if you want the life of someone who is whatever it is for you, maybe you want some, the life of someone who has a, another job that you would prefer than what you have today, or maybe, you know, your car keeps breaking down. You want a better car. So you want to embody what that would be like to own or drive a better car than what you have today. Start to just embody that and take some of that energy into you and you will see the shifts start to happen. So just like a be, person who drives that car. Exactly. Just like a person who drives that car. And so, and that is how every day can always be a new day. So know that there's always hope. Every day is a new day, and I hope you have a fantastic day. 